We are at the Swamp, and it is ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Subway. A few things better than this, SEC under the lights. We got a confirmed title contender and an upset hungry rival. Tennessee taking on number 11, Florida. Glad you're with us, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Greg McElroy. And Greg, I think this is one of those tricky times on a schedule when you're a team like Florida and every comment and every question all week is about what just happened, yeah. not about what's about to happen. Is this a hangover game coming off the Bama thriller? Well, if you listen to Florida players, no. They said, hey, no moral victories. We're Florida. Our focus is directly ahead of us. However, having been a player, I'm telling you, it has an effect on your preparation. When everyone's talking about what just happened, just how close you were, it's hard not to revel in what could have been. So we'll see whether or not Florida's affected by that performance last week tonight against the Volunteers. Florida won the toss. They elect to defer. 51st meeting. Florida leads the series 30 wins to 20. They've won 15 of the past 16. Davis Jones, very dangerous return man back. Jason Chrisman to kick away as we are underway here at the Swamp. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players for the Tennessee Volunteers and the Florida Gators. For Tennessee offensively, Bayless Jones, so dynamic, got to get more touches to him. Jacob Warren, his length in the red zone becomes very problematic. Zach Carter on the edge of that defensive line has been huge for Florida this year. And then Rashad Torrance in the back end for the Gators. Gators are beat up in the secondary. They're going to need his presence and leadership to make sure they're organized with some young players at corner. Now Carter's target tonight is Hendon Hooker. His second straight start was the starter last week when Joe Milton was unavailable. 17th start of his career, the transfer from Virginia Tech. And he will start on the ground, and he gains two yards as he was taken down by Newkirk. Hendon Hooker was thrust into the lineup because of the injury to Joe Milton. He's an athletic quarterback that has been steady and has a veteran presence under center. Very valuable to first-year head coach Josh Heupel. Small on second and eight is going to test the right side as it'll be a third and about four from there. Small was injured against Pitt, was held out last week. Tennessee is a team that loves to use their tempo. They're going to use that throughout the course of the night. Their offensive line finally back to being 100% after having some injuries the last couple weeks. Third down and four. Here's Hooker. On the slant, it is incomplete. It was off the hands of Jimmy Callaway. It was a nice design and play call from head coach and offensive coordinator Josh Heupel. Just too much heat on that throw from Hendon Hooker. He threw it too hard. It was slightly behind the wide receiver. He had Callaway open. Just had to be better at executing the throw and being more accurate. Six foot six, Paxton Brooks on to punt away. Xavier Henderson back deep for the Gators. Brooks with a wobbler, not a lot of hang time there. Henderson fields it at the 29 and gets it out just past the 33. And Katie George, that means it's time to say hello to Emory Jones. Yes, it is, Tess, and I think we can all agree Emory Jones looked different against Alabama than he did his first two outings. He says that's a product of his preparation. He's still navigating the workload and responsibilities that come with being the starter, but he felt like he did enough with film study and game planning to be so mentally prepared last week that he could play loose, relaxed, and he just went out and let it rip. So he feels like he's found that sweet spot of what it'll take each week to get back to that high level of play. And Greg, I think it really showed itself in that 99-yard drive he had against the Tide in the third quarter last week. Jones at time, now tucks and runs, and he does this so well as he scampers for 11 yards. And Emory Jones is so athletic, of course. 
Very good thrower from the pocket, but he still possesses the ability to escape and create big plays with his legs. The first down for Florida. Malik Davis gets the call, and he is wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage that time. That was Tyler Barron, the defensive end with the tackle. He is off to a great start this season. And I think it's going to be really important for Tennessee throughout the course of this game. After the success that Florida's had running the football last week and throughout the course of this season, that D-line is in for a challenge tonight against a potent run game. No gain. Davis gets work again, patiently waits, and then look at the leg drive. As for a moment there, he was just carrying Jeremy Banks on his back. A flag is down. We will check on that. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Number 33, 15-yard penalty, first down. And that was the aforementioned Banks. See Dan Mullen, year number four with Florida. Let's see, is that hand on the face mask? Looks like it is. Good call by the official. Opening drive and Florida already at the Tennessee 33. Fakes the pitch and now Jones goes downfield and he gets it complete to the big target. Justin Shorter who Greg goes 6 by 228 as a wide receiver. And that was a great throw. Love the misdirection play action boot. As you see big Justin Shorter working across the middle. Ball was thrown on time. You saw the defensive back, McCullough, closing quickly, but a well-timed throw and a very accurate one from Emory Jones. He's off to a nice start tonight, Joe. 16-yard reception. Tennessee showing a gap pressure. Now they back off as Jones checks the protection at the line. Jones, play action. They pick up the pressure. He goes inside the five, and it was denied as Jalen McCullough came in to defend that. And a good play there by McCullough. Emery, we just talked about the timing. That one just a little bit late as he tried to find Shorter on the curl. Windows close very quickly down in this part of the field. Got to be on time. Gamble motions and flexes out. It's a design quarterback run on second and ten as Jones will get it to the 11-yard line. Six-yard run will be third and four. I like the balance so far from Florida offensively. Getting Emory Jones comfortable, getting him on the move, giving Tennessee's defense a lot of different looks, and also utilizing that quarterback run game, which is going to continue to be a huge part of this offense throughout the meat of the SEC schedule. First third down of the drive. Third and four. Might have a chance at quarterback run again to the right here. Little light on that side, Tennessee. Motion shorter to that side. He looks to the right. Plenty of time as Jones, running out of options, tries to get to the corner, and it will be first and goal Gators as he was met by Alante Taylor. Well managed opening drive from Emory Jones. First and goal. Davis, nothing there. Nice job collapsing on that left side of the line. As you saw, Bumfus and the rest of the Vols getting after Malik Davis. And this would be a huge win for Tennessee, obviously, to get off the field here, forcing the Gators to settle for three. And this is the part of the field where Florida likes to get Emory, Ju Emory on the move. Get Emory Jones out of the pocket, rolling to his right. Give him a run pass option. If there's nothing there in the pass game, let him run it. Be an athlete with the ball in his hands. Nine play of the drive right here, second and goal. Jones looking for anything up the middle. 
And he's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. He was thrown back by Jaquan Blakely. Third and goal. See the formation from the Gators here. See what they decide to get in. Yeah, they're going to get in that alignment. The tight end to the left. And his running back Davis to the left as well. It's a good opportunity in that bunch formation to the top to get a little bit of a rub, a little pick for your wide receiver. Shorter motions to the bottom of your screen. Some motion down there. As Tennessee almost came into the neutral zone. And Emory Jones to a wide open Malik Davis. Touchdown Gators. We talked about that pick and that rub. You're going to see these guys disappear, which essentially just frees things up for Davis. And you look at the trash there in the middle of the defense. It's Jeremy Banks, the, tie, the linebacker, trying to recover to cover the running back, was actually dropped on the play. Jace Chrisman gets the start at kicker. Remember last week, Chris Howard missed a PAT against Pama. That's why they had to go for two at the end of the game. So Chrisman, the kicker tonight for the Gators. Well, hangover? Maybe not. Emory Jones comes right down the field. Ten plays, 66 yards, and finds Davis easily for the touchdown on the backfield. Look at that beautiful sky west of Gainesville as you are watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe Gregg and Katie with you here at the Swamp. 7-0 Florida scores on their opening drive. Davis Jones on the return. Taken down at the 21. First down, Hooker, incomplete. <laughs> Hooker on the ground. And the first down for the Vols. Nice answer there from Hendon Hooker and a good play call. Not very accurate early on. Get him comfortable by using his legs. Thank you very much. What a scene you guys had there. And here we've got the Florida Gators a week removed from what they were able to do in that thriller against Alabama. Now facing an upset-minded Tennessee team with first-year head coach for the Vols, Josh Heupel. Hendon Hooker got the start at quarterback. Brenton Cox with the tackle there. Three and out on Tennessee's first drive, Greg McElroy, and then Florida came down the field, 10 plays, 66 yards, as Emory Jones got it to Malik Davis for the touchdown catch. That has us at 7-zip Gators. Second and 11. Hooker being chased down, but able to get it out to Tillman. So far, it's been a really aggressive effort from Florida's defense. Pressures and blitzes, tight coverage, man-to-man. -man. They're less than 100%. Some secondary players that are out for this game, but it hasn't affected them up to this point. So far, the only positive yardage Tennessee's really been able to make have been with Hendon Hooker's legs. Second straight start for Hooker. It was the starter last week when Joe Milton was unavailable. 
for 17 starts in his career after transferring over from Virginia Tech. Third down and eight. Out of the backfield, this is Evans with a good block in front, and Tyon Evans is off to the end zone. 47-yard touchdown for the Vols. And made possible by the big fella up front. Watch how he's able to get out in front. This is Darnell Wright and secure the edge. All he has to do is get a little bit of a piece there of Bernie, the defender. Next thing you know, he was out the gate. What an answer from the Tennessee Volunteers. Great way to respond. Tennessee, they love to be high tempo offense, quick strike, and that's what they did here. On the road, down at the swamp, after Florida made it look so easy on their opening drive. Tyon Evans was the number one JUCO running back in the country. Showed it there, didn't he, folks? We got a 7-7 game early on at the Swamp. Hey, Greg, we've been down here for the past few days. Every conversation, every question coming off that thrilling game against Alabama was what happened last Saturday, right. not what's happening tonight. So people are saying, is it a hair of the dog remedy game? Is it a hangover <laughs> game for Florida? Well, you think about it. You talk to the Florida players. No, we're focused on what's in front of us. No moral victories. This is the University of Florida. But having played the game, I can tell you it's hard to rally on what's in front when all anyone's talking about is what you just did. So the hangover's real. However, the offense didn't show any signs of the hangover based on their performance on the first drive. No, they didn't, Katie George, did they, with Emory Jones? No, they didn't, guys. Greg, to your point, Emory Jones had never heard the phrase Alabama hangover prior to this week, which is fitting because they feel like they got an Alabama boost this week in practice. Jones says he and his teammates feel more confident, confident than they did a week ago because they learned two things in that loss. One, this team is resilient, down 21-3, to three, and they never flinched. And two, to be great, the margin of error is so small. Just a couple of untimely mistakes to be exact. So players tell me they're hungry and motivated to songs from last Saturday and probably those missed tackles as well in that last drive. Greg Jones had some great moments last week. Uh, 76 yards on the ground. Uh, led that 99-yard drive against the Tide. And here he carries and he struggles to find anything at all. Jeremy Banks there with the tackle. And I think what was most impressive is that he had some adversity early. Had the interception down 21-3. A lot of guys fold their tent, not Emory Jones. Guy waited his turn, and now here he is as the starting quarterback. Everyone loves Anthony Richardson, the backup. What does Emory do? do? Give his team a chance against the top team in America. I was so proud of his performance last week. Jones on the slant. He is able to get it complete to Welsh. Flag was down as you saw Tennessee rushing into the neutral zone of that A gap. Matt Leffler leads this SEC crew tonight. Offside on the defense, number 97. Five yard penalty, second down. Now they're focusing on Emory Jones, but it's been Anthony Richardson has been so much of the talk here at Florida, the backup quarterback who's been getting playing time early, splitting time, but dealing with that hamstring last week is so dynamic and so explosive. We will see if he gets some time tonight. Uh, don't get it twisted. He's a big piece of this offense, but this is Emory Jones' team, and he showed it last week with his performance. Did he ever? Second and six, Damian Pierce. He spins free and somehow gets to the outside before he's finally wrapped up by Trey Flowers. What a wiggle from Damian Pierce. And that was an unbelievable run by Pierce. Tried to stretch it to the outside, cut up inside. Look at him stick that right foot in the ground. Almost gets shedded. But the quick acceleration getting back to the outside to the right. This young man is so good, so dynamic. And Stay so fresh with the running back rotation they use at Florida. He goes for 14 yards. First down. Jones. Jones able to get free. He's like having another running back in the backfield as he crosses midfield. And he'll move the chains again for the Gators.
Tonight Tennessee's defense Greg has already given up 77 first quarter yards. This has been a team that's dominated the first quarter outscoring their opponents 38 nothing in the first quarter obviously not the case a little ramp up in competition against the Gators. This is Pierce out of the backfield and a great job defensively by Tennessee Theo Jackson who if you watch enough Tennessee film you will see him everywhere as McCullough and Jackson were coming in on the play and covered this team for a long time. I would say that Theo Jackson's probably one of the biggest surprises. I, I just didn't anticipate this level of productivity. I mean, the guy has been off the charts, making plays over and over again, timely sacks, getting after the quarterback, pressuring off that nickel spot, and then making plays downfield as well. He's been outstanding there in that versatile spot. Loss of four. They come to the other side, set up the screen to Henderson. Henderson gets to the outside of the blockers and inside the 40 yard line as he is tackled by Taylor. And this is a spot here for Florida. Possible four down territory. You're looking at third and four. You can run your quarterback. Run Emory Jones on that quarterback power. It's been effective up to this point, but they've also had some success here in this empty formation, which it looks like that's what they're going to go with here on third and medium with Naquan Wright in the slot and Wells in motion to the top of your screen third down and four Jones over the middle and he's got it complete to Naquan Wright Naquan Wright came up huge on that 99 yard drive against Bama he made a big contribution to that critical scoring drive last week. and this is a great job by the offensive line you see the two a gap pressures the guys on either side of the center those are the most dangerous so you take care of them you leave the unblocked guy to the right hand side which Emory Jones can see he gets the ball out of his hands quickly that was outstanding execution against an all out pressure look from Tennessee by not just Emory Jones and the wide receiver but also that offensive line. Offensive I love line. good protection. Was, I, I'm was, sorry, that got me real fired up. Well, I love good protection. Good pass pro there, but Excellent. last week the run blocking in the second half, these guys were leaning on that great Alabama defense. Right, testing the left side as he has it down to the 18-yard line. Flowers with the tackle. We had a great visit with Dan Mullen yesterday. We asked him about Emory Jones, and he said, "Listen, early on he was playing tight a little bit, but in that Bama game, he just relaxed." He was out there just simply making plays and that's what they saw during training camp from Emory Jones and I think he's getting back to that place and we've seen it early tonight. Yeah, saying he was just trying to be too perfect man. You can't be perfect. It's an imperfect game. Just do the best you can and he cut it loose last week in a remarkable way. Second and three. Right. Makes a man miss. Tries to cut back but he's going to be tackled for a loss. That was good work by Solon Page. A loss of two as Page makes the tackle. He had a pick six last week, his first career interception. It's been important for him to step up because that second level of this Tennessee defense, Jawan Mitchell and Jeremy Banks, Solon Page, that's a thin group. Not a lot of experience. I mean, coming into the year when your best linebackers are converted running back, you got some problems. So Jawan Mitchell's been a nice addition from Texas, but man, they got to find some more depth at that spot. In this league, you're going to have some attrition. That was the right tackle who took that kickback. Gene DeLance. False start. Offense, number 56. Five yard penalty. Third down. That'll be a third and 10 now. Right of the Southland. 400 members strong when you get them up at Neyland making the trip down here Florida is three for three on third downs tonight now facing a third and ten. Delay a game on the offense five yard penalty third down. Dan Mullen was looking at the official saying hey reset the play clock he was kind of doing a raise the roof with his right arm which means that clearly he thought it should have been a fresh set but not the case as the officials back the Gators up yet again on a pre snap infraction. Empty look for Jones as Davis is in the slot to the top of your screen on third and 15. Tennessee dropping eight on third and 15 and that ball was almost intercepted Jackson made a play on it. 
So a couple penalties, and then the Tennessee defense does their job. It looks like on that play, Emory Jones and his wide receiver not on the same page. Like Wells was the intended wide receiver, and Emory went right over to him, by the way. And you see Dan Mullen also talking to the receiver as well. In zone look, he's got to sit it down. Instead, Wells ran across the defender's face and resulted in the incompletion. Jace Chrisman for the 47-yard attempt. Remember, Chris Howard was the kicker last week, and he missed that extra point against Bama that forced them to go for two. So Chrisman gets the start this week, and he puts it through. Mullen signs him at Mississippi State. Now he's playing for coach over here for the Gators, and he gives them a three-point lead. And Matt, T.J. Finley and Auburn playing at LSU next week. This is Davis Jones from out of the end zone. And Jones wrapped up at the 22-yard line. Katie. Well, Tess, Greg, Josh Heupel has been impressed with how Hendon Hooker has handled everything that's been thrown at him since he arrived at UT. From adding another quarterback to the room, from not being named the starter, from being thrown in after Milton's injury, he has remained the same guy. No moment has been too big for him. So this team has great confidence in him. Heupel says Hooker needs to communicate efficiently amid all this crowd noise, which he's done thus far, and he has to hit on the deep ball for Tennessee to find success tonight. And this young man's played a lot of football, man. I mean, he's seen these environments before, so he'll be a steady presence there in the backfield. Got to make great decisions, and like you said, Katie, got to hit some of those plays downfield that they've left on the field the first three games. He's going to run it here, but he's dragged down from behind. He could not shake free that time. Ramon Mielin with the tackle of Hendon Hooker. Visiting with Alex Polish, the offensive coordinator yesterday, kept hearing those words about Hooker, right? Veteran, savvy, calm confidence. Got to have it in a spot like this on the road. Second and six. That was thrown low into the inside of Jalen Hyatt. And these are the throws that just haven't been made. Of course, Hooker had some presence in his face from a Florida defender, but they have to be better driving the ball down the field. This offense is all about big plays, and when your longest completion this season's a screen, that's not ideal going to be tough to find against a talented Gators secondary. Third and six. Hooker. Wrapped up just beyond the line of scrimmage by Newker. Daquan Newker, who came to Florida from Auburn. Grew up in Orlando. So back home in Florida to finish up his college football career. And he's done a good job. Newkirk and Antonio Valentino, their transfers that they've added to the middle of that defense. This defensive line last year was borderline unrecognizable based on the standards that you've come to expect from the Florida Gators. Those additions have been massive to solidify the front and make sure that the strength of that defense resides on the inside. So that was the second three and out for Tennessee. Florida up 10-7. Both of their scoring drives were 10 play drives. Malik Davis got it started, and then we had the big highlight 47 yarder from Evans for the Vols. 10 7 game here at the Swamp. We'll be right back. Oh, welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year Contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. And they're all jacked up because the head ball coach Steve Spurrier was just out there the entire time with a live mic in his hand during that commercial break. <laughs> robbing everybody up as he is wont to do. Paxton Brooks to punt away for Tennessee. Xavier Henderson back deep for the Gators. You know, head ball coach is never shy about bragging about the success of the 90s, and boy, did they have it. And you remember the years with Peyton Manning at Tennessee. Peyton never beat Florida, but he put on some thrills, like what we saw in 96 when Florida jumped out big, and then Manning rallied 492 yards, but came up just short at the end. Those were the glory years of the rivalry. And Florida has won 15 of the past 16 meetings. They've won four in a row. Last time Tennessee took a win was September 24, 2016 in Knoxville. I remember that game well. Florida got a big lead and Josh Dobbs led him back. Malik Davis 
Trying to find anything on the left side, but he was wrapped up immediately by Jawan Mitchell, who was the leading tackler for the Texas Longhorns last year. And so far, at least after the first drive, this Tennessee defense settled in a little bit. They've done a pretty good job of keeping that run game in check, not allowing the big plays. Second and ten play action. Jones wide receiver screen with a more. Nothing happening there as well. As Tennessee is quick to get on it. Roman Harrison getting out in space to make the tackle. Trent Winnemore. Third down and seven. Opportunity for the Vols defense. They're led by Tim Banks. He's on the Penn State staff as the co-defensive coordinator. And now it's moved over here with the Vols. The pressure look from Tennessee. Third and seven. Pitch to Davis. Davis going to be well short of that line to gain. So the Tennessee defense will walk off the field having done their job. That was Matthew Butler, defensive tackle, able to track Davis. That was a nice job by Tennessee there, pursuing, bringing that presence inside. Emory Jones, freedom to check at the line of scrimmage, gets to a speed option that was a very effective play for them last week. Obviously, you could see Tennessee repped it a little bit in practice from their scout team this week based on how they pursued. Delay game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Bayless Jones, the return man. And just walked off the field as Crawshaw punts away. Nobody deep. Nobody deep, and this is going to take a bounce inside the 20, inside the 15, and be downed all the way at the 11-yard line. Tennessee offense back out on the field on a steamy night here in Gainesville when we come back. 10-7 game, Gators out in front. Thing off the field moments ago. Well, as you can see, there's two number ones on Tennessee's team, all right? Trey Flowers and Bayless Jones. Well, here's Bayless Jones. He's back to return. And Trey Flowers, by the way, also a return guy. So two number ones were on the field at the same time. They realized that both no. number ones ran off the field. Therefore, Tennessee just played the last snap with nine players. You gotta be kidding me. And with that, a 58 yard punt with no return man. Evans testing the right side. They just had nine players on the field for punt return. Both number ones ran off. But nobody Thinking the other them. one was staying on. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Never seen that, ever. And with it, the worst starting field position that Tennessee has had, second and seven. Hooker able to get it to Warren, and the big tight end is trying to get to that corner for that line to gain. I, I kind of like these tight ends, as you can see. I'll be a first down. I, I kind of like these tight ends, man. I'm not going to lie. I did not expect them to have as much of production here early on, but both Warren and Fant have been really good contributors to the passing game for Tennessee the first three games of the year. First down, quickly to the outside, as this is Callaway. Callaway will get four yards with the reception. And so far, you haven't really been able to see Tennessee at their fastest tempo. Got to get some momentum, got to create some opportunities. Got to move this chains to pick up the speed. Second and seven. Hooker going to take a shot downfield and wide open is Payton. And look at this. The Vols take the lead. Javante Payton. Big shot, deep shot, Hendon Hooker. And Tennessee out in front of Florida with a 75-yard touchdown strike. Tennessee fans can breathe a deep Exhale because I just saw a Tennessee quarterback hit 
the receiver and stride down the field. How many times in the first three games have we seen volunteer quarterbacks throw it 10, 15, 20 yards over the receiver's head? Not here. What a great throw from Hendon Hooker to Peyton. As the big play explosiveness of this offense very much alive. Longest Tennessee pass play of the year, topping what had been their longest. Both of them big play touchdowns for the Vols. Just what they said they would need. This one, Sepian College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway and in part by American Express. See all that you can expect when you're with Amex. Some of the great images through the years between Tennessee and Florida. Balls haven't won here since 2003, but right now, Javante Payton and his teammates are loving it. 14-10, Tennessee on top. Payton, who transferred over from Mississippi State, he got separation moments ago and strided 75 yards for the touchdown. Malik Davis on the return from inside the five. And it's a good one out to the 25. Let's go to the studio and Matt Barry. All right, gentlemen, check it in first on Alabama taking on Southern Miss. Bryce Young to Jalil Billingsley. First quarter, they can move on to Ole Miss in that one. 14-0 uh, early. What about West Virginia and Oklahoma? 17-play touchdown drive. Garrett Green punches it in. First 17-play touchdown drive in a decade for West Virginia. Been a fun day in college football. Had Clemson grab their second loss. Got punched right in the face by NC State. We got number 11 here with a test at home against a feisty Tennessee team. Emory Jones on first down. That's batted at the line of scrimmage, and it harmlessly goes off to the side. It's definitely been a crazy day, like you alluded to, but when you see Tyler Barron on the deflection there this Tennessee defense man they saw that performance from Florida and they're not blinking right now man they've been active at the line of scrimmage they've been in good pursuit second and ten Pierce there's a stiff arm and he makes his way to the 30 yard line the third down from there six yards from Pierce I don't want to make it seem too big but this is a fairly critical third down for Florida the momentum right now currently residing on the Tennessee side. Henry Jones and the offense facing a little adversity here on third and medium. Sprint right slings it sidearm to Copeland and Copeland will have the first down. He's a guy who many around here felt would be a breakout player this year. That was a good job there by Emory Jones and a nice call to get your quarterback rolling out to his right. He's got tons of protection. You got Gamble out in front. You got Pierce as well. And you just have that little hitch route because of the pursuit to the sideline trying to stay in front of Emory Jones. You catch that little hitch right in behind it and it's an easy throw and catch. Good execution there from the Gators offense. Latrell Bumfist defensive tackle for Tennessee. He's been injured the last few weeks and he's down here being attended to. We'll take a short break. Eastern time. It's a little better than what you were doing this morning at 10 a.m. You're <laughs> running through Wob Wally Woods Nature Park with our director, Jeff Evers. Just a little humid down here at the Nature Park. Here's first and 10. From behind, Emery Jones is taken down by Blakely. Right there, that was a good pocket. Emory Jones just has to step up a little bit further. You look at the left tackle garage. I mean, he's done all that he can do. Emory at that point has to acknowledge that the shot clock is going off. You got to go vertical because that presence is coming on the backside. Fourth tackle for loss for this Vols defense tonight. Second and 12. To the outside this time to shorter, and he is wrapped up right away. That was Banks with the tackle. Third down and seven. You got to think here. So far, 
Involving the running backs in the passing game, I think, is advantageous to the Gators. Can they get some man coverage from Tennessee? And when you get man, what do you want to find? Your backs and tight ends. Let's see if they get Malik Davis out along the right side. He's in the backfield now on third and seven. He leaks out. Jones is going to tough run and come up a yard short of that line to gain as he was pursued well by Barron and Banks. Six yards there, and it leaves him with a fourth and one with that ball cresting right over midfield. And Florida with their starting center, Egwukan, down, and he has been a solid force in the middle. He was a backup guard last year, but now Kingsley, the starting center, and the medical team is out there. And on the other side, Tyler Barron is down for Tennessee. I hope those guys are okay. And you got to wonder if you're Dan Mullen. Fourth and one with Egwukan in there. Probably feel a little better about going here on fourth and short. But man, I don't know if I feel comfortable with a backup center going in there in a fourth and one critical got to have it situation. Time presented by Subway as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Jeremy Crawshaw is heading out to punt for Florida on fourth and one with the ball at the Tennessee 49. His second punt tonight. Theo Jackson back to return. Reverse spin fair catch called for just inside the 10. Story of Tennessee's season so far have been missed opportunities. More specifically, overthrows by the quarterback. My goodness, these wide receivers have gotten open on so many different occasions behind the defense, only to see the ball sail way over their head. Well, tonight's a new night. But Hendon Hooker delivered that last one down the left sideline like a thing of beauty, hitting Peyton in stride and finally connecting on a deep ball. They have had their fair share of struggles pushing the ball down the field. And in this offense, you have to have it. You look at those numbers. Under 30 yards, 71%, that's excellent in college football. Over 30, seven, can't have it. Minimum 30% with the amount that they're going to have in this offense. And tonight, though, one for one, very, very nicely done. Jabari Small with the carry. Katie? Coming into this season, Mahmoud Diabate said Ventrell Miller was the field general and he was his lieutenant. Well, unfortunately, the Gators are without Miller due to a bicep injury. Diabate has now assumed that leadership role. He was very vocal on the sidelines during the defense's last break, wanting guys to do their job, but reassuring his teammates it's just four points. He is their leading tackler tonight. Hyatt getting in the space. If you can get Jalen Hyatt into space you're winning he is their fastest receiver he has just struggles and drops this year yeah he has but these wide receivers for Tennessee man talking to their staff last year they were really excited about their young talent hi it's a big reason why 10 yards there fresh set of downs they go back to the receiver screen this is Tillman I'll tell you what this roster is thin across the board but one area where they're extremely deep is at wide receiver I think it's their best position group them and the defensive backs so with this vertical passing attack that they want to employ, it's a pretty nice thing to be strong at wide receiver. Second and eight wrapped up in the backfield was small by Brenton Cox. Brenton Cox has come up big in some critical moments. Had a big sack of Bryce Young, Bama's quarterback last week. Third and nine. Listen to that roar of the swamp. Hooker bobbled the snap and now he's just trying to figure anything out and he's driven down at the 25 by Mahmoud Diabate. And this snap just way off target is pretty good job by Hendon Hooker could have been disastrous. Watch how the snap goes way to the left as Cooper Mays back from injury. They're happy to have him but that time the talented center Missing the mark, forcing Hendon Hooker to try to get what he can. 
Mays back healthy after missing the last two weeks to start in center. That snap was a little low to Paxton Brooks. And this punt goes off to the side. Matt, what's going on there in the studio? All right, Joe Tess, I've got you. Akron jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Ohio State's now bounced back two touchdowns. Kyle McCord got the start, the true freshman out of Arizona. Travion Henderson, another true freshman, just punched it in to make it 14-7. Oklahoma down 7-0. Spencer Rattler to Austin Stogner. And right now that thing is all tied up in Norman, 7 apiece. Just a 34-yard punt here. Six and a half minutes to go before we get you to Matt, Jesse, and Joey in the studio. Another wild day of college football. And we'll get you up to speed on everything you need to know. Emory Jones on first down gives to Naquan Wright, who has his tight end blocking in front, and he is rolled over for just a gain of a yard. Matthew Butler with the tackle. Matthew Butler is a sensational story and works his butt off. He's a poli sci undergrad degree already in the bag, and he earned an NCAA postgrad scholarship. He's an impressive young man. Has done a good job there in the middle of that defense. Second and nine. Naquan again. Oh, he was tripped up. He was just about to gash that Tennessee defense, and he got just a little turf monster to bite him on the toe. Oh my goodness, it was the paint, Joe. That's what it was. He stepped on the logo and the paint gets you to slip every single time. It's a real thing, actually. That's a, that's a, you can't step on the paint. That one, oh my goodness, what an opportunity missed there by Naquan Wright. He can fly. He's scraping up against five foot nine, but he can fly now. Third and five over the middle, and that is complete. Forward progress should be marked for a first down to Rick Wells, the receiver for the Gators. At some point, Emory Jones in this Florida offense is going to have to take a chance downfield. Everything, for the most part, has been underneath, which has allowed Tennessee to kind of sit there at the seven to eight yard mark and just squat on some of those underneath throws. They're going to have to fake one underneath and throw it over the top or go with a double move at some point to take advantage of that aggressiveness. This is blow. Before the snap. Tennessee takes their first charge timeout of the half. Josh Heupel able to get the timeout. Of course, all the success that he had at UCF and now the first season at Tennessee. Week three Monday Night Football, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles against Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Eight o'clock on ESPN. Monday Night Countdown starts at six o'clock. Of course, over on ESPN2, it's Peyton and Eli. All right, Greg, who had Hendon Hooker for 147 and two <laughs> touchdowns and a Tennessee 14 to 10 lead over this Florida team that looked sensational with all the second half momentum against Bama? I, I thought if they were going to do it, it was going to have to be by way of the big play because this Florida defense kind of came into their own in the final three quarters last week. However, pushing the ball down the field, that's what Tennessee's all about. And if you look at Josh Heupel over the course of his career, whether it's at Missouri or at Oklahoma as a coordinator or at UCF as a head coach, it's all about big plays. So if they could finally hit on a few of those, this offense could become really problematic. What I've been more surprised by, Joe, is just how good this Tennessee defense so far has held up against what was an offense that really found themselves last week against Alabama. An offense that was rolling downhill in that second half against a tremendous Alabama front. They were running at will. And you know all the success he had at UCF with the offense that he runs, that hyper signature high tempo offense. 522 yards of total offense they averaged. FBS total offense lead for those three seasons, but you know he's built up all the success no matter where he's been as a play caller at Missouri, his years with Sam Bradford and Landry Jones at Oklahoma, and of course a great player himself as a championship winner and Heisman runner-up. Now they're looking to see if this last play to Rick Wells that went for a first down actually was a catch and where it should be spotted. Let's take a look. It does look like Wells secures it all the way through. Yeah, you can see, and then it's just a matter of whether or not 
he had the line to gain and right there based on forward progress it would appear as though he does I think that is an obvious confirmed after the official takes a look at it. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a tough first down. Tennessee has no more challenges remaining for the game and took a timeout as well. So they exhaust the timeout in doing so with that challenge. First down, Florida. Back to what we were talking about before the interruption, I, I feel like Florida needs to at some point push the ball down the field. This Tennessee defense has played pretty well so far after the first drive. Now they're settling in. Florida needs to try to throw it over their head with a deep ball or some type of double move. Jones, and he gets it complete to Henderson. And that's down to the 28-yard line. Goes for 20 yards. And there you go. That's exactly how you loosen up that defense. Just getting it over their head a little bit. Not a deep ball there, but driving the seam out of the empty formation. And a good job, too, by the right side of that offensive line, picking up the pressure by the Volunteers. First down, tried to get it out quickly. Flag is down, but you saw when he was coming off the play action. Emory Jones bobbled the ball for just a moment. He's had a free play, too. Yep. Offside on the defense, number 51. Five yard penalty, first down. That's Simmons, interior defensive lineman for Coach Heupel. You got press coverage up top, potentially one on one. This is where I might throw a fade to my big body wide receiver. Shorter. You can see him locked in one on one. He's six foot five. Instead, they keep it on the ground with right, and here he goes inside the 10 and across the goal line. Three-yard touchdown, Naquan Wright. Florida's longest play from scrimmage tonight. And with it, a three point lead. It was a beautiful run there by Wright, but all made possible by their outstanding tight end. Look at how he captures the right side, the right shoulder of Juwan Mitchell, which essentially springs right to the third level. He makes a guy miss and does the rest, but that made possible by the excellent block by the tight end, capturing the correct shoulder, and a beautiful thing by Wright, running off of that, as Gamble really led the way right up the middle. That's the way they like it, back out in front, with a little chomp to go. The Tennessee defense, in terms of giving up runs of over 10 yards, they've been doing their job against competition it doesn't look like Florida prior to this now tonight already Florida with four runs over 10 yards but keep in mind what Florida has been doing running the ball lately last week against Bama they went for 244 they were 5.7 per carry against the mighty tie Davis Jones from inside the five on the return Jones works his way over the 25. Hey fans, don't forget, 
Check out the Great Clips Command Center broadcast of this game. It is streaming now on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. You and I were burning up the ESPN app today. We were trying to follow everything. Of course, the guys <laughs> will get you up to speed. Matt, Jesse, and Joey coming up in moments. Arkansas looked great again. Arkansas is 4-0. Are they the Texas State champs now? They beat Texas <laughs> and they beat Texas a and I think by the, that means they also they beat Texas. They beat Texas Tech as well. Yeah, yep. I think we'll give it to them. Give them the belt, Joe. Hooker on first down, trying to extend the play. Going to take a shot wide open and overthrows to the outside Jacob Warren. I mean, Jacob Warren was floating all alone down the near side of the field. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it was a good job of buying some time, escaping to your right. Oh, just overthrown. Oh. Look at number 92. Look at Callaway. Hands on the head. My goodness. Greg, I think you're closer to Jacob Warren than any Florida defender just was. Second and ten. Jabari Small. And he is wrapped up after a gain of just two by Jeremiah Moon. And those are the plays you just can't leave on the field. Not against a defense that's this good. They've had their fair share of issues in the secondary from time to time. So when they're there, you have to take advantage. Without their best defender, Kair Elam, in the secondary this week as well. Hooker facing that wall of sound here at the Swamp on third and eight low snap has to field it off the ground and then he is sacked. Florida defense crashing home on Hooker. Carter brings him down. And you look at Carter just coming off the edge working against Darnell Wright. I'll tell you what, look at the strong arm. I mean, goodness gracious, that left arm for Carter, just full extension, pushing the big left tackle back into the backfield and making the play. This young man has really turned it on for the Gators up front. You can tell here in his final year in Gainesville, the light's gone on. The defensive staff so thrilled with his growth. And you can tell, man, there's a new level of focus for him knowing that he has to be the alpha dog along the front, and he delivers there in a great situation. Well, Greg, Zach Carter said he returned for his fifth year to improve his draft stock and lead this defense back to Atlanta in order to do both. He worked on his pass rushing skills on the edge with O-lineman Kingsley Egwukan and Ethan White during the offseason. Last year, he relied on a lot of power moves, he said. Now he feels like he's incorporating moves with his speed and his hands, making him a more complete player like we just saw there. And Katie, we were told the other day, kids got work ethic and hustle now, and he has the desire to get better, and that's what is showing up. A lot of contact against Henderson as he was trying to field it and the flags rain in. See Holiday tapping his hat there. Xavier Henderson was moments away from fielding that punt and all of a sudden the Mack truck just ran him over on specials. And you got to be careful too. Is that targeting? Because that's a defenseless player and as you see. I mean he's leading with the crown of the helmet a little bit to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. I think that is targeting. So not only will this potentially be a 15 yard penalty, but you might lose holiday for the day as well. Well, our rules expert John Perry, that's the ultimate defensive defenseless player being a punt returner, isn't it? It is. It's tough back there. Those guys take some big hits and this is what they want out of the game. They want to eliminate the eyes looking at the ground leading with the crown. During the play, kick catch interference on the kicking team, number six, with targeting. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 18, on the kicking team. The previous play is under further review. You've got a whole lot to clean up with yeah. Matt Leffler's crew there. 30 yards of penalties on top yeah. of it, which, of course, puts Florida in prime position to go steal some points before the half just can't happen there if well, you're Tennessee. I mean listen when you come into a spot like this and you understand where Tennessee is in their program evolution first year staff and some roster attrition if you want to pull a big upset on the road against the 11th ranked team in the country you got to play clean ball have to got to play clean ball can't do it to yourself 
can't do it. And that right there, of course, Holiday is losing track of exactly where he was, but lowering the head, chin down, crown of the helmet, right to the head or neck area of Henderson, who's fenceless because he was trying to catch a punt. He's going to be out, but it's the unsportsmanlike after the fact that adds 15 more yards. That's even more inexcusable. That was William Mohan. Hustle plays happen, but dumb plays can't happen. Not if you're playing pretty dang well against one of the top teams in America. The team that took Bama to the brink a week ago. Bama's not having a hangover, by the way. They're up 35 zip on Southern Miss. But early on, that was the question here with Florida. Would there be the Bama week hangover? So far, I would say no. I mean, it played pretty well. It hasn't been great. But remember, this is a rivalry yeah. game against a team that can create some big plays down the field when given that opportunity. Well, both these penalties are tallied up. We're going to have five review, Tennessee penalties. The ruling of, of targeting is confirmed. And it is. Number six is disqualified. Both penalties will be enforced from the 30 yard line. So both penalties enforced. And now here in this first half, it's five Tennessee penalties for 55 yards. We're going to trot that ball out all the way past midfield. So with just over three minutes to go in this first half, Tennessee goes from having a lead thanks to the two big plays to now needing their defense to make a wall here, not give up more points before the half. And right now Florida's not too far away from field goal range as well. But with the, the momentum that they have, I'm taking a shot. Plus territory, 40-yard line, Tennessee reeling a little bit after those mistakes. I'm going heavy play action, see if I can't throw one downfield for a touchdown. Start from the 40. Pierce patiently waiting for a block. Tried to bounce it, then reset, and then dives ahead to the 36-yard line. Damian Pierce last week had that 18 yard touchdown run against Bama that closed the score to 31 29 before the failed two point conversion. Second and six. They go underneath with the shovel. Not much there for Campbell. Right here now you play the clock game a little bit. If you're Florida knowing that Tennessee does have that quick strike potential. Four down territory for the Gators too. You got your whole playbook here if you're Dan Mullen. Third and three. Jones looks one way, designs to run the other, and is gobbled up. Only got a yard that time as he was met by Jeremy Banks. And this is a great job there at the point of attack by Tennessee. Page and several others there. Roman Harrison really holding the point. A really good job there on the right side of that Tennessee defense, dropping Emory Jones to force fourth down. Fourth down and two. Offense on the field. Tennessee 32 yard line. Here's the running back with Jones. And it goes under center as the play clock comes down. They're going to use a timeout. So they'll stop the clock there trying to draw them offside. Minute 20 to go. Let's check in with the studio and Matt. Okay, Joe Tess coming up with the Mercedes EQ halftime report. Some SEC teams needed latest games. We'll show you highlights of those plus overtime in Clemson and NC State. What a finish it was. And there were so many games around the country that you probably normally wouldn't be watching. Lucky for you, Galloway watched them all in sweatpants. So Jesse and Joey and I will have all the highlights from a wild day in college football coming up. 
Matt, as you know, if all of us who have been anchors through the years had a dollar for every time Joey Galloway turned to us and said, nobody told me I had to wear actual pants. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Auburn had a rally against Georgia State. We'll hear about that. You know what happened to Clemson. But it was another wild day around college football. Had a thriller in overtime in Chestnut Hill where BC beat Missouri, an SEC team on the road, a rare trip to New England. I knew you were going to reference that one. I like Well, that was the game we were locked in on. <laughs> we just were a all bit locked in, no doubt. Fourth and two. Jones to the near side. Copeland's wide open and spins his way to the 15-yard line. Ball came out. Extra effort from the Tennessee defense, and the ball came out and they jumped on it with Beasley. Copeland was fighting for more. Tennessee was hustling around him and Beasley with the fumble recovery. Man, what a huge play right there by Alante Taylor just ripping on that football as some of his friends came to the party. The ball just coming loose right there. Outstanding hustle from their leader on the back end, Alante Taylor. This young man has been through a lot. And right there making a huge play. Stripping that football from Copeland as he tried to fight for extra yardage. First turnover of the game forced by Taylor. Beasley gets the fumble recovery. And those two may have just kept seven points off the board. And Tennessee will be happy to have this thing at a three-point margin. What a play that time by Taylor. I'll tell you what, man, that dude, I have so enjoyed watching his career. So physical, great presence there on the perimeter, man. Fun guy to watch. Small, good jump play from Tennessee. They have two timeouts remaining. Spike it here. Don't save those timeouts if you can. Get up there and clock it. Of course, this offense no stranger to going fast. That's what they do. Over three plays per minute on average. Hooker to the far side and curling out of bounds is Cedric Tillman. So a half a minute to go as Tennessee on the move after the turnover. A tremendous effort play by Alante Taylor and Aaron Beasley defensively. Flags are down as Hooker goes over the middle and is looking for Jones. But they are waving this off and talking it over. Back at the 25 yard line those officials are huddled right there on the play before on mm. first and 10 you have a clock stopped for the chains you can spike it with That's 40 right. seconds left instead you try to run a play you gain five yards it's great but you just waste 11 seconds I, I just always tried to understand why wouldn't you just spike it and save that time as opposed to worrying about the downs on the offense not all 11 players got set at the snap. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 30 seconds. The clock was dead, so there is no 10 second runoff. Now there's fast and then there's too fast. So it's second and 10. So then you think about, Greg, to your point, was the five yards worth it? No. Right? Was the five yards worth it compared to the 11 seconds? I need the time more than I need the down. Todd Grantham, defensive coordinator for Florida. What does he come after Hendon Hooker with? An illegal snap here is starting to get loud here in the swamp. False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Second down. Okay, Mays is their best offensive lineman. Guy who can play anywhere. Got a little banged up last week, but he's a preseason first team all SEC guy. Seven penalties for 65 yards tagged on to Tennessee. And then Hooker shovels it ahead to Jabari Small. And Jabari Small with a quick burst and is across midfield. We'll spike it. Clock. Get up Chase there and McGrath, clock. Veteran kicker looking for his chance. And instead, they're going to play it out. Hooker with time, and they get it complete. Valus Jones has Tennessee now knocking on the door a chance to tie or take the lead. Two timeouts, 13 seconds remaining. Going to play it out again. 
Timeouts to Yuzi overthrows an open Bayless Jones and now six seconds remain. You don't want to go to halftime with timeouts in your front pocket. Yeah, and I, I would have spiked it there because you need one for the kicker. So you if you can potentially save a little time, I would have clocked it. I'm not worried about the downs. I don't have enough time to run all four anyways. Save one timeout for the kicker, get up there and clock it. Have not loved this operation. Even though the results have been good, I think they've wasted a little too much time. Could have potentially had a couple shots at the end zone had they opted to go with the clock as opposed to and trying to call a play. And now you got to call timeout. You know, it's amazing how much things can swing because Florida's sitting there and Naquan Wright has the 23 yard touchdown run. They go up 17 to 14, some penalties, and here comes Emory Jones and Malik Davis and Pierce, and it looks like they're going to roll right in and add to their lead. Extra effort, hustle yeah. means everything on defense, right? Huge. You get the completion, but there's Alante Taylor, and he's <laughs> ripping at that ball, and all of a sudden now it's Tennessee going the other way. Yeah, and it looks how look how fast things can change, yeah. right? I mean, Florida was in a really comfortable spot, and Alante Taylor, who's been a game changer for years now, changes the game. Now what looks like what would have been at least a four-point deficit at halftime might be a tie ball game. And here's Chase McGrath who came over from USC trying to tie the game right before halftime. 47-yard attempt and it's off to the right. So it'll stay 17 to 14. But oh, we've got a fun one here in the swamp. The way it's supposed to be when the Vols and Gators get together under the lights. 17 14, number 11 team up. Let's go to the studio for a halftime report. With Matt, Joey, and Jesse. Gentlemen, take it away. Yo, Tess, great first half. Time now for the Mercedes. College football primetime is presented by Subway. We are here in the swamp under the lights and a Tennessee team that came in believing is sitting here only trailing number 11, Florida by three they had a missed field goal just before the half Emory Jones that guy right there has a touchdown pass on the night our first half stats are brought to you by PlayStation Tennessee with 271 total yards to Florida's 213 the majority of those yards came on just a couple plays that's right big plays have been the huge reason why Tennessee is in this football game because if not for those, this thing was looking like Florida was going to take control. Well, Florida's going to take control of the ball to start this second half. They'll do so with Malik Davis from the two yard line as Davis tries to find something but good coverage on special teams. Katie, moments ago with Dan Mullen. Coach Mullen, you know Tennessee wants to take shots downfield. How do you limit the explosive plays next half? Well, we got to tackle, and then we can't have a blown coverage. I mean, guy, just lack of uh, attention to detail right there uh, on the defensive side of the ball, letting a guy just run free down the middle of the field. Then we got to do a good job wrapping up. And then offensively, what do you want to see from your guys this next half? Just execute. I mean, we're down here in the red zone right now about to score. We fumble, turn it over, can't make those mistakes. I, we we got to play at a much higher level here in the second half. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Well, they played at a much higher level in the second half last week against Bama as they rallied from behind, brought that game down to a two-point conversion. Jones to open up the second half. Look at the time he has. But coverage downfield doing their job, and Jones had to make a man miss just to get back to business. Kyrie Elam, by the way, out. Best defensive back for Florida tonight. You mentioned the big plays from Tennessee. If we are to have something where we got the big upset being threatened here in the second half, it happens how? They have to continue to manufacture big plays. And Florida, if they want to really end this game, they can, but they need to increase the urgency, man. They just seem sluggish offensively. Everything's been kind of underneath. It's been relatively conservative. Got to open some things up in the second half. And Davis gets them going with a first down. I mean, you know, a lot of the descriptions you're saying fall into that very first topic we brought up to start tonight. When you've played through a week of practice where every single question and comment and conversation is what happened last week against Bama, you're really not on the muscle fully for this week and this game. And now you got time to come out of the half and think about it and hit downfield like that to Justin Shorter. Jones to Shorter. And now they're on the go. 
And this is what I've been begging to see from the Florida Gator offense tonight. Take a chance downfield. Shorter, your big body wide receiver, working against a solid physical corner in Elante Taylor, but he wins over the top and Emery drops it in the bucket. Guy who was originally the five star to Penn State, wide open right over the middle, just leaking out, was Kamari Gamble, the big tight end. And this is the urgency. I've been waiting, I've been waiting for it. I haven't seen any tempo, haven't seen any rhythm. It's all been very conservative. Now, Dan Mullen's starting to get to that second level of the playbook. And as a result, Gators are knocking on the door. Exactly what Mullen said they wanted to do, exactly what you said they need to do. And now to Copeland, and Copeland trying to spin free, and he does so to the 14 yard line, met by Jeremy Banks there. And Mullen sitting on 100 career wins. Of course, all the success at Mississippi State, all the success originally his first go around here at Florida as the offensive coordinator, a couple national titles, Tebow's Heisman. Second and six now. Emory Jones looking over to the side, Malik Davis flanking. Here's Whittemore, could be a double pass to the end zone. Wide open, touchdown Gators, chop it, Gamble. Trent Whittemore, the Gainesville local with the touchdown pass. And I love it. What a great call in the red zone. Find your tight end on the double pass. I love the aggressiveness that we saw from the Florida Gators there coming out of halftime after leaving some points on the field in the first 30 minutes. Now that's what the number 11 team in the country is supposed to look like. Talk it over at the half. Hey, we're getting the ball. What do you want to do with it? You be decisive. You be a dagger. And you score like that. Right into the heart of that Tennessee defense. Ten-point lead. Gators. In Ship Drive Game of the Week. 24-14, and that means you take 5'9", 170 pounds, Tyler Waxman, and you pump him up for all those points. <laughs> that on the heels of the trick play, Whittemore's double pass. Bayless Jones from the three. And he returns it out to the 23. A flag is down at the 34-yard line. Joe, Greg, and Katie with you here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Florida found themselves down to Tennessee in that first half. During the return, holding on the return team, number 12. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. And let's take a look at tonight's fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. And it's been the big plays from Tennessee, not just offensively, but defensively. They finally connect on a deep ball. I know that was a sight for sore eyes for volunteer fans, but also the defense getting in the mix. End of the half, looking like Florida, getting ready to make this a 10-point game. And Alante Taylor comes out, rips the ball out. They recover it, almost turn it into points themselves. Just big plays so far from Tennessee, and they're going to need some here because Florida had a beautiful opening drive to the second half. Now let's see how the Tennessee offense reacts. Evans just taking Florida defenders with him. Tyon Evans, who is this year and then next year of eligibility. A Juco player, a guy who had never been to Tennessee before he signed up to play for the balls. You look at his build, Greg, and 5'11", 220. He looks like what an SEC running back should look like. Yeah, I like their backs. I actually think that both Tyon Evans and Jabari Small are going to make for a really nice one-two punch with the speed that you see from Small and then obviously 
the explosiveness power that you see from Evans. That's a nice combination for Josh Heupel. And Greg, keep in mind, two guys transferred out. You know who they are? Eric Gray was the starter at Oklahoma, right? And Ty Chandler was the starter at UNC. And Evans again spinning. Helmet comes off, and he's still fighting defenders to stay on his feet. Evans says, I'm not done. We're playing some recess ball here. I like it, man. That's right there, a tone setter for your offense. Because you look at those legs, man. He just doesn't give up. Just keep fighting, keep fighting. Let your big fellas come help you, man. That sends a message to the team. We're going to continue to grind. And if Florida doesn't do a better job tackling, they're going to find some more success on the ground. Second and two. Jabari Small, he is met right at the line of scrimmage and then driven back by Daquan Newkirk. Third and one. Hooker pulls it. Third and one. And he's going to pick up the first down easily as head Jalen Hyatt out in front of him. And he said, I'll be the caboose, no problem. First down, Tennessee. A good decision there from Hooker. Nothing there. Great coverage and discipline by the Florida defense, but the quarterback gets it done with his legs. Heavy breathing after that run, and Jeremiah Moon opposite you. So seven on the outside, six just inside. Zach Carter, they got some talent off the edge here with the Gators. Jabari Small, and as he catches a seam to the 42-yard line, Newkirk with another tackle. That goes for six yards. Pretty impressed with this offensive line from Tennessee so far. This is a group that has had their fair share of ups and downs this year. But tonight, they're getting a decent push against the Florida Gators defense that's been very solid in the middle, especially last week, and really holding that Alabama offensive line in check. Got the Mays brothers up front. Cade, the star right tackle, Cooper, the center. Evans on second and four. He's past midfield. And now Tennessee with a very nice response to that quick strike four to drive. Moving the chains. There's that pace and tempo. This goes for just a yard with Evans. Right now, not only do I like the offensive yardage that Tennessee's able to pick up, but man, they're also giving their defense, who just got gashed, some time to make some adjustments. As you can see, number eight, Tyon Evans down for Tennessee. So Evans is down in pain. Tennessee on the go, facing a second and nine, Josh Heupel's bunch when we return to the swamp. Where the Gators have a 10 point lead over Tennessee. And Hendon Hooker, over a year ago, was hospitalized with COVID 19. And there was a thought among doctors that he would never play football again. Hendon told me it was a very scary situation. Luckily, he had both of his parents by his side. And while he was in the hospital bed, he actually wrote a poem he titled A Promise to the Game. Essentially, words to live by if he was ultimately cleared to resume football activities. Luckily for him, all tests checked out and he was given the green light to play last season. But the poem he wrote that day, sticks with him. It's part of the reason why he ended up at Tennessee. He still wants to fulfill his promise to the game, Tess and Greg. I think that's wonderful. Making a promise to overcome, to get better, to figure out a way, and to fight on. And that's what he is doing here against the 11th ranked team in the country. Second and nine for Hendon Hooker. He got the start a week ago. Joe Milton was unavailable. Gets the start tonight on the road here at the Swamp. Dealing with that sound, communication critical. As he keeps it himself and just finds enough to get it to the 42-yard line. It'll be third down from there. And Hooker right there. Not making a great decision on the pull on the zone read. Potential four-down territory. Got to stay aggressive if you're Tennessee. Third and five. 
Hooker, quick strike, and going up to try to get it was Warren, but it's incomplete because he was covered very well that time. That's so how Hopper was on top of him like a thimble. Just a little high there for Hooker on the big body. You got to body up that wide receiver, throw it right in his chest. Let's see if Tennessee tries to draw Florida offsides here in this part of the field. Offsides will give it to you. That's what I'd be looking at. Fourth down and five. Ball on the Florida 42. Fourth down, and they get it complete. Clutch play, Javante Payton. He had the 75-yard touchdown earlier. Flag is down. As you see, Cooper Mays limping, their starting center who missed the last two weeks with a leg injury. So Peyton was able to create some separation. There was a receiver running out in front of him. I, you know, we get, we get into that area with the two men on the near side with a pick. Right. A there rug. is no foul for offensive pass interference. First down. Yeah, and I like that call too because there was obvious man coverage, press coverage between the wide receiver Callaway and number three Marshall, but he didn't really do anything to obstruct. So I like that no call. It's a good job by the official. As Dan Mullen clearly doesn't like it. We see the benefit of those stack releases, right? Oh, Good. yeah. First down for Tennessee after they convert the fourth down. Hooker trying to escape, and then he is just thrown down by Jervon Dexter, who's coming off one of his best games that we've seen from the young defensive tackle. He had eight tackles and TFLs last week against Bama. And you saw Dexter right there lining up right over the center, Mays, who we just saw with a limp. If I'm Florida, I don't think that center's at 100%. I'm continuing to try to apply pressure in the middle of that offensive line. And they get another TFL, just as you said, Greg. That was Brenton Cox who was able to get the tackle. Saw Cooper Mays limping just moments ago. And now a couple big plays from the interior, that defensive line from the Gators. Third and 12. And you see that nose tackle. Valentino lined up right over the middle of Mays, who's clearly less than 100% as he's limping around. So I'm trying to take advantage of that right now if I'm Florida. Hooker, they set up Evans out of the backfield, but he can only dive ahead to the 30-yard line. Definitely. So it'll be fourth and five. Definitely going to go for it. If they went for it 10 yards ago, no, they're going to do it here. A nice job. A similar play to what they scored on earlier at time. Just a better job rallying to the football for the Florida Gators. First touchdown of the night was Evans taking a pass like that for 47 yards to make it 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's see if Tennessee goes back to some of those stack releases where they can potentially get some meshes and some rubs that could free up some of their guys underneath. Dan Mullen looks on fourth and five. Hooker, can he convert again? Shallow cross is incomplete. Callaway dropped it. Oh, my goodness. As Callaway, the perfect play call from Josh Heifel. You got man coverage across the board. You run that rub route right in the middle, mesh, right over the football. Callaway might score. I mean, there's no one behind it because of that mesh that's created over the top. Just takes his eyes off the football. And a big play wiped off the board for the Tennessee Volunteers. Just a massive mistake after what was beautiful execution leading up to the drop. Turnover on downs. Florida takes over. Sprint right Jones. Sidearm, what an effort that time by Wells. Full speed on the sideline. Drag the toe, catch it, complete it, advance it. Yeah, great hustle there. Does he get the foot down, catch? Wow, beautiful job by Wells. One of those six-year college football players. Rick Wells, 13 yards there. 
And now a little stutter step from Emory Jones as he's splitting defenders and dragging Tennessee inside the 35. Emory Jones, 24-yard run. And he's just reading the end man on the line of scrimmage who flies underneath and it allows the tight end zipper to just bypass him, get to the next level, and get a piece of the Tennessee defender. Pierce on first down. Trying to get to the edge. Flag is down as Pierce goes for 10 plus again. This flag is down back at the 34 yard line. Let's see if they walk this back. Holding on the offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Richard Garage, the left tackle. So hard when you get those real wide handoffs. It's the defensive linemen are just running to the sideline, and you, as an offensive lineman, a big old dude, 312 pounds, is garage. Trying to stay engaged is so difficult without tugging a jersey. So it's not uncommon to see a hold on plays like that. Jones going to run it. Tried to work off the block of Pierce. He does, gives a stiff arm, and he rolls his way to the 32-yard line. McCullough met him there 11 yards from Jones. And right now, it's hard for those Tennessee pass rushers to really come after the quarterback because of how effective Emory Jones has been with his legs. That time, just quarterback draw. He's out the gate one-on-one -on -one with a safety. So tough when you have a quarterback that's as mobile as Emory Jones. So tough on that defensive line. If you get too aggressive, you can get burned. Second and nine. Remember, they got backed up because of the penalty. Pierce on the backfield. What a great move by Pierce. And it'll be third and short with that effort. Ooh, how about that? A little, yeah. As you can see, he puts the move on McCullough. Just an excellent stop there by Pierce with his right leg digging back inside. Makes for a third and three. It was first and 20 not long ago. Jones, blockers in front. That's a first down, a spin, and a little more. Emory Jones, and there's his mom, Trina. He's so close with his mom. They have a dynamic relationship, a daily motivation, inspiration with a text he wakes up to every single day. Amazing, just the relationship that they have. And, and he is playing his tail off here in the second half. A couple yards for Pierce. Katie? Yeah, guys, I actually had a chance to speak with Emory's mom, Trina, before the game. And so she said she's just not just proud, but she's impressed with the way Emory has carried himself this season, especially this last week. She said she told him he need to keep believing in himself. And she said she was so happy to finally see him do that against Alabama. And Tess, to your point about the, the texts every single morning, she told him, you got to pick up right where you left off. But this time, you got to get the win. Yeah, exactly. Came up just a two-point conversion short last week against Bama. Second and eight, Pierce. And Pierce will get it to a third and one. So she texts, Trina will text him every morning, as Katie has told us. Sometimes it's some scripture, sometimes just a, a great attaboy endorsement. And she tweets too, Greg. Yeah, do not be intimidated by the Giants. I love it. I think it's amazing to have that stable force, that unwavering support, so valuable to these young players and Emery. Your biggest fans in the stands, no matter how you perform, you know you're going to be loved. That's an amazing thing. Third and one, fakes the pitch. Trina's son gets it complete for a touchdown. How about that, Mom? Rick Wells scores it. Emory's got a couple touchdown passes tonight.
Rick Wells was on the glory end. Good looking drive. They do it in 405, eight plays, 70 yards, and a nine yard touchdown to Rick Wells. All that daily inspiration. What does Trina say? Control what you can control. Right now, her son is controlling that Vols defense in the SEC on ESPN. 31 14. Now, what is Waxman doing now? Tyler Waxman. They got him doing the bike <laughs> celebration after this touchdown. What's my man up to there? All right, Katie, what do you got? Well, guys, you were mentioning that Cooper Mays was limping during that last drive. He's also dealing with a left hand injury as well. He came over in the sidelines and was in a lot of pain as trainers splinted his left pinky finger to stabilize it. And as he was getting worked on, Hinden Hooker stopped by the offensive line and he said, hey, I'm going to go a lot faster this next drive. I'm going to be louder. Everybody needs to stick with me and be ready. So expect that, guys. We'll look for it, Katie. Starting center, Cooper Mays. A good young player. Just had been beat up this year so far and of course missed a couple games. He's very valuable in a tempo offense like this. Having a center that is completely dialed in is of the utmost importance just for communication. So he being out there is valuable, but man, it's tough when you're not at 100%. Evans can't find anything. That Florida front starting to play to their level of talent now. And Mace is not in good shape. Katie just gave us the report. And he is limping around just trying to gut it out there against these Gators. We're going to go off the left side with Evans. Good choice as he is going to get the first down a little bit more and then he is thrown out of bounds hard. Good job there by Josh Heupel, the offensive coordinator, recognizing the middle of your offensive line struggling a little bit right now. Get on the perimeter. Use some of that speed. See if you can challenge the edges. 12 yards from Evans. Hooker with a man right in his face somehow gets it to Jones. Bayless Jones able to make the catch. Well, Bayless Jones has had a pretty quiet night outside of the return game, but man, he's got to be an asset here moving forward as you see the toughness on display from the center for the Volunteers. He's not one of those super seniors, six years of college football, four years at USC, transfers to Tennessee in 2020, and then everybody gets the COVID year, and, and now a first down for Tennessee as they just run it up the middle. There is Bayless. I think he's the guy that can really provide a spark with the catch and runs. They have guys with great vertical speed that can get on top of the defenders. But the guy that's best with the ball in his hands is that guy right there, Bayless Jones. Got to find more opportunities for him in the pass game. It's two catches, 27 yards tonight. Quick strike over the middle, incomplete, as Princeton Fant couldn't come up with it. Hooker survives the first wave, but doesn't survive that. Jeremiah Moon brings him down. That time, Jerome Carvin, the left guard. If your center's not ready, not 100% ready to go, your left guard's got to be strong as can be. Carvin gets beat inside, which leads to the rush on the quarterback. We got zeros end of the third here. A third quarter that was dominated by the Gators. They got the ball to start this second half and they said we're going to show you what we can do. Whittemore had the trick play to gamble and then Jones went to Wells and thus why you have a 17 point margin here in the swamp. Here's a view from our AT&T 5G Skycam. What an incredible scene here between the third and fourth quarters in the swamp. Just unbelievable with Tom Petty and the crowd swaying back and forth. Just an amazing scene. Start of the fourth quarter, Tennessee trailing by 17. They keep it on the ground with Jabari Small. Folks, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen it, just go to ESPN.com or YouTube. 
the piece that was done a couple weeks ago of the Swamp's love affair with their native son, Tom Petty. Because they cranked that thing before the start of the fourth quarter, and it's a scene that says it all in this conference of it just means more. I won't back down. And they have not tonight, even when Tennessee came out punching. Fourth and two. Late clock counting down as the roar was raining down. Delay down. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. I don't know if they had some miscommunication there. They actually took out Cooper Mays, who has been far less than 100% throughout the course of this second half, has been walking with a limp. They slide their left guard, Jerome Carvin, down to center. And there's been some back and forth between Carvin and some of the other offensive linemen, clearly not on the same page prior to that snap, which led to the penalty for the Volunteers' offense. Yeah, Carvin had started the last two weeks at center when Mays was out. Hey, Sunday Night Baseball has got Yankees and Red Sox. Series finale at Fenway. Both AL wildcard spots are still up for grabs. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern on ESPN with baseball tonight. Sunday Night Countdown. The game starts at 7. Paxton Brooks now on to punt. Xavier Henderson back deep for Florida. So fourth and two moves to fourth and seven and means they're kicking away. Fair catch around the 12-yard line. This season, along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds, for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. I know right now, Tennessee and, and Florida fans, more specifically, they're feeling fairly comfortable. Ball in their possession. They've had a great third quarter plan. Now heading into the fourth with a comfortable lead, but with the quick strike offense the Tennessee has on their sideline, it's very important for Florida to put a drive together here, establish dominance along the line of scrimmage, and try to run this game out. Naquan Wright, he's trying to get small and just find something. Instead, he slides down after a gain of just one yard. Murray Jones. Started the game 6 of 9, 42 yards. Since then, 12 for 12, buck 40. Had the touchdown pass to Wells. Several of which have been down the field, too. Low percentage throws that he's been very accurate on. Second and nine. He pulls. Look at the block out in front with Gamble. Gamble's clearing the way. Emery Jones, explosive play just like that. Trey Flowers had to track him. But Emory Jones, mom loves it, Swamp loves it, 49 yards. Just a beautiful quarterback zone read with a wrapper. And how about the Gamble man out in front leading the charge as Emory shows you the Jets. Wasting no time. Getting back to the line, incomplete, looking for Gamble. Trying to reward the big guy after being the snowplow out in front. That's one of those, as you can see, Tennessee clearly struggling tonight against the run. Not to be that surprised because this is a Florida team. Level of competition is ramped up. I know Pitt, good solid team from the ACC, but not a team that's going to impose their will on the run game. So this was going to be an increased challenge, and Tennessee has not met it so far tonight. Nikon Wright. It was met right away by Aaron Beasley. Aaron Beasley, who had the fumble recovery just before halftime when Taylor had that strip. Tennessee had a golden opportunity, missed a field goal just before the half that would have tied this game. Then they had another opportunity earlier in the second half when there was a fourth down and a pass that was dropped by Callaway that you said, man, he could have caught that, turned up field, maybe even scored. We would have had a 24-21 game there in the second half as well. Yeah, missed field goal at the end of halftime too. I mean, Tennessee's had some chances. There was some motion up front. False start on the offense. Not all 11 players got set. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay third down. So the movement will mark him back. And Josh Heupel's had a great attitude, Greg, when it comes to 
this team, this program, saying, hey, we're on a journey to become as good as we can, as fast as we can, but unique circumstances with what Tennessee's dealing with. Very difficult. Thin roster, too, and with the change that's occurred now with one-time transfer, freedom of transfer, he lost a lot of capable players. Yes. No one has been hit harder than Tennessee by the transfer portal. they got to hang in there because it doesn't get any easier, obviously, in the SEC. Third and 17. Jones has all day coverage downfield start and stop and then he's taken down at the 39 yard line. No man's land here for Florida. Plus territory fourth down. I mean you almost have to go for it. I, mean, I guess you can punt it. We don't have a ton of room. Punt that travels into the end zone is only going to be a 23 yard 18 yard punt or so exactly. 18 or 19 yard punt. So tough position on the field to be in if you're Florida's offense. Theo Jackson is going to put his heels on the 10. Good news is that there are 11 players on the field in punt return for Tennessee. We had an oddity earlier tonight, huh? Look at this bounce by Crawshaw. Did it, bounce it went in. It yeah. just bounced in. It just crossed the plane. And we had that out of the earlier tonight. We had nine players on the field on punt return for Tennessee. They had 11 there, folks. Don't you worry. Just under 11 minutes to play. Ford out in front. How about that? Let's look at the Goodyear College Football rankings. As it is the year that we didn't expect. We have some fresh faces bubbling up, Greg. Yeah, no doubt. And how high does Arkansas go? I mean, a lot of question marks on the rankings for some of the upsets this week. Hooker taken down by Diabate. We're going to see Oregon after this game. Rod Gilmore is on the call that game. He said Thibodeau is going to be a game time decision. He said Anthony Brown is fine. Will start. Didn't play the second half last week. Got dinged up a little bit. But you will see how good those Ducks look in a game that everybody expects them to shine bright. Third down and ten. Rush three, drop eight. Hooker on third and ten. Gets it complete for nine yards and then more for Jacob Warren, who did a nice job turning and getting up field. His father played for the Vols. James Warren was a big offensive tackle back in the early 90s. Now they got to get to their hurry up. Warp speed if you're Tennessee. Hooker going to take a shot downfield. And it is just to the inside and beyond the speedy Hyatt. Good recovery there from Florida. It looked like Hyatt was behind the defense, but it was an excellent job by Dean recovering, taking a good angle and cutting off the throw. Not much for Evans at all. Flag is down as Evans was taken down by Bogle. Maybe a face mask here. Based on Evans' reaction, that's what you'd think. Personal foul, face mask, number 33 on the defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Take a look. Yep, there it is. Newman and Yellen getting a big hold of it. So it's a first down after the 15 yard penalty ball on the Florida 48 yard line. Bobbled the flea flicker and Warren had a jump on it. And now Hendon Hooker is slow to get up. And he got hit hard there. And yeah, he's he's shaken up a little bit. And you can see the flea flicker, but on the right side, Warren just gets beat 
around the edge by Umin Mielin. Well, and they're coming out to take a look at the starting quarterback, Hendon Hooker, and we'll take a quick break. Submit your best fan video to hashtag show your Saturday and you just might get 15 seconds of fan fame hashtag show your Saturday. Well Hen and hookers in the medical tent. And that means we're going to have Joe Milton the third as the quarterback. He's back after suffering a leg injury two weeks ago. But he was the starting quarterback to start the season. Michigan the past couple years start five games a year ago and now he's back to action for the balls as he gives to Evans on second and 17. Milton's got a lot of ability to drive the football very strong arm a little erratic but he's been nursing a leg injury so you have to wonder just how mobile is he at this point might be a little more stationary than we normally see from him. Third and 18 that's what Joe Milton steps into. Ball start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Third down. And now he steps into third and Ocala. As they are backed up here in the swamp to a third and 23. And earlier in the game, they went with that little draw, a little shovel pass. Maybe you go with something similar here. See if you can catch Florida off guard. There it is. Good call by you, Greg, as that'll go forward incomplete. So Hooker was wrapped up hard and taken down when they were fumbling around off the flea flicker. Milton has to step in and now they'll be punting away. Tennessee just so many mistakes tonight. Dropped passes, missed opportunities, made some plays. Got to give them credit for that, but can't make the mistakes they've made and expect to keep it within striking distance of a team that's as good as the Florida Gators. Sixth punt of the night for Brooks. And let's see if this dribbled in. Yes, it did. We'll size up Florida as a contender. Things are interesting when you look at this Gators team, aren't they? Coasting home towards a win here at the Swamp. They are celebrating that this weekend. Under eight minutes to play. Malik Davis is going to grind it on the ground. In the last five decades, you got 165 national or conference championships, 2,700 female student athletes, and all the success they have had. Bridget Sloan got the chance to meet her some years back, just a sensational world class gymnast. Won the 2013 NCAA all around. Second and six. Davis. The third and a long two. Plan to play is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, and Emory Jones has been outstanding tonight. I mean, really from the very beginning. Accurate, decisive, has made great plays with his legs when nothing's there through the air. Improvising and creating and continuing to assert himself as the leader of this football team. Look, I know everybody loves the backup. I understand that. But let's not overlook what Emory Jones has done now through four weeks of work. He's gotten a little bit better. He brushed off some of the mistakes he made in the first couple games. And he has played as well as anybody could have expected from him in the last seven quarters of football. Third and two. Pressure off the edge. And out of the backfield is Davis. They scored on the same play earlier tonight. And here they move the chains. Katie. Well, guys, after the Alabama loss, Anthony Richardson took to Twitter to post this. Congrats, my G. You definitely shocked the world today. Continue to strive for greatness and keep playing ball, my boy. Let's keep it going and handle everything one day at a time. Richardson says he hears and sees negative things said about Jones, and he said, I don't get it. He's a great quarterback, so he felt like it was important to let him know, I'm always in your corner. And this isn't for show, you guys. These two are really good friends. They're incredibly close, and they support one another, even though they play the same position, which isn't always the case at places. And Katie, we heard the other day about, you know, what was going on in that Bama game. As Davis takes it forward, Greg, you said, listen, every time I came over the sidelines, there was AR-15 helping me out, cheering me on. 
And I think that's one thing. And don't get me wrong. You know, Anthony Richardson's a special talent. He's going to have a place in this offense. But last time I checked, we've seen Florida employ two quarterback systems with great success in the past. One in particular in 2006 yeah, with right. Chris Leak. Everyone loved Tim Tebow, and understandably so, but Chris Link was the starting quarterback of that football team. So you can do a lot with a two-quarterback system. Dan Mullen's done it before, and there's no reason why both these guys can't have a role. But to overlook what Emory Jones has done through three quarters of the Bama game and this game, it's been so impressive. Pierce on second and three. Nice cut, and then Pierce takes it for a first down. Guys, I think Dan Mullen said it best. He said Jones and Richardson's know that they're both going to get opportunities, that they're both getting developed here. And he said, look, you see, hey, the quarterback room I was in before had Felipe Franks and Kyle Trask in there, and now they're both in the NFL right now. So it's not like only one guy gets to go. It doesn't have to be that cutthroat. Mullen says these two understand to find great success, you often need the other to do so. Yeah, remember, Franks was the big recruit, and Trask was the guy who was the afterthought. And Franks then transfers, has success at Arkansas. Now he's the backup for Matty Ice with it. Atlanta and Trask, of course, because a Heisman finalist. But that's nothing new when it comes to Dan Mullen quarterbacks of finding success. He is the quarterback whisperer and can mold any type in any form in any kind of season. Jones backpedaling incomplete. I mean, think about Mullen through the years, and you can go all the way back to what they did with Bowling Green. Remember, he was part of the Urban Meyer staff, and Josh Harris was excellent there and then Alex Smith all he did was go on to be the number one pick in the 2005 NFL draft of course the glory years that you mentioned with Leak and Tebow couple national championships a Heisman Trophy Dak Prescott's cash in massive paychecks because of the foundation was set at Mississippi State Nick Fitzgerald had three tremendous years and then a year ago one of the best offenses we've seen in recent college football and that is Dan Mullen and what he is able to craft time and again with his quarterbacks. That's quickly getting it to Rick Wells who tiptoes the sidelines. I think what I appreciate most about Dan Mullen is he's taken guys that weren't necessarily bona fide superstars. He took three star prospects, unheralded prospects as you can see along the bottom line and turned them into elite players. Josh Harris, Alex Smith, Dak Prescott, these guys were afterthoughts. People thought Nick Fitzgerald was gonna play tight end. All he does is go on to That's have right. an amazing career. Kyle Trask never started a game in high school. He was recruited by McIlwain, developed under Mullen, and now playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I think him being able to bring out the best in his guys is what I've appreciated most about him. Danny and Pierce tripped up there. You know, and you consider those years at Mississippi State and understanding the certain limitations at Mississippi State when it comes to recruiting. When the first ever college football playoff rankings came out. Remember that? 2014. First ever <laughs> oh, college yeah. football ranking. Number Absolutely. one team was Mississippi State. It was. With Dak Prescott. And he's done a great job. And I think what I appreciate, too, back to the conversation about the quarterbacks, every guy that we showed, it's not like they're all carbon copies of the same person. No. He can do it with a thrower. He can do it with a runner. Doesn't matter. He'll adapt the system to you. And I think there's something to be said for that. Jones on first down, lofts it to the end zone, and that is incomplete, which leads to another conversation, as you and I were down there for the week of SEC Media Days, and everybody loves giving their predictions during SEC Media Days, and it was runaway Georgia <laughs> and runaway Alabama, and we turned to each other and said, are they dismissing Florida? Are they forgetting that it was Florida who beat Georgia last year? It's Florida that still has a core of talent. Yes, the big three in terms of offensive production are gone, but with Jones and with Richardson, these quarterbacks and this offense is now built more the way that John Hevesy, the run game coordinator, and Dan Mullen typically win. Right. And typically then, like to go about the offense. No doubt. Big offensive lines that can lean on you and really impose their will in the run game. Like this. Pierce inside of 15. And don't get me wrong. I mean, George is a juggernaut right now. I mean, there's no denying that. But to overlook what... Hevesy and Mullen have done in the past with less than superior personnel to write them off I think would be a huge mistake. Aguacan the center for Florida and Simmons the defensive tackle for Tennessee are both down with just under three minutes to play. We'll take a quick break. Time presented by Subway. Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Emory Jones, Florida's quarterback.
has 200 yards passing, couple of touchdowns, has 144 yards rushing. And with that, the Gators have a 31 to 14 advantage over a Tennessee team who came out punching and fighting and trying with everything they had. 17 14 at the half, and then Florida turned it on. Yards per play in the second half. You see that over 10 yards per play. Third and six. Jones, empty look here on third down. They bring four against them. It was caught right at the line to gain, and then muscling ahead was Henderson. Xavier Henderson, who's really probably considered the most advanced of the young wide receivers on the skaters team. They got some good ones, man. I, I think that that wide receiver group, we're going to fast forward to the end of the year, and we're going to see some guys that start to emerge. I'm not saying they're going to all of a sudden turn into Kadarius Tony and Kyle Pitts. All right? I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is this is a group that was a pretty, pretty significant question mark. I no longer think that this is a problem. These wide receivers can get it done in this league, and I've been very impressed with what I've seen through four games with Emory Jones. Getting better, too. Davis into the end zone. Florida racking it up now. Nine-yard touchdown for Malik Davis. Seen that look before, haven't we? That was a put away drive right there. For 12 plays, 80 yards, and have it any way they want. Let's go to the studio and get an update from Matt and the guys. All right, Joe Tessitore, keeping you updated on things going around the country. Adrian Martinez and Nebraska. How about this? Michigan State comes in undefeated, ranked, and Nebraska's up one late in the fourth quarter. It has been one of those days around college football. West Virginia also leading Oklahoma 13 to 10. Just tell me it's not a good slate and you'll get a day full of upsets. You know, Matt, I look to see how is Nebraska doing now? I just looked at the box score, Greg, and you know, they're holding Kenneth Walker the third to 39 rushing yards. Yeah. <laughs> We saw Michigan State last week, and I was sitting to myself, sitting there thinking to myself, like, man, that Kenneth Walker dude, he can go. Well, he's on Heisman list. He this can week. go. And I have, I mean, I'll tell you what, Nebraska, man, they found something on defense. That Illinois game early, it's been a different squad last couple weeks. Over 500 total yards for Florida. You know, Tennessee had 261 yards in the first half, 97 in the second half. Florida defense stepping it up. All right, so you think about Florida. You saw what they did against Bama, right? They take Bama down to a two-point conversion. They had a missed extra point or else it would have been a tie game. And now here comes the road ahead with a championship caliber team. Everything, Greg, is going to be defined right here in this next month. you got a good Kentucky team. you got a completely overmatched Vanderbilt team. And then here comes the stretch. LSU and then Florida, Georgia. October 30th. So as we said, all summer long, everybody's making their SEC predictions. And there's, oh, that's Georgia and Bama. Yeah. Georgia and Bama. And then the focus is, is Texas A&M good enough in closing the gap a bit to Bama in the West? And then all of a sudden last week, the eyes were wide open. <laughs> Everybody said, will you look at how this Florida team is yep. playing? Right. Uh, and they've been so impressive. And it's not right now. Georgia's playing at a level that very few teams in the country are playing at. I think it's been pretty remarkable to see what they've done offensively, and their defense has been locked down from start to finish. And I tell you what, man, Florida can just squeeze the life out of you. It's kind of been what they did last week. It's kind of doing what they're doing this week. So I'm not saying I'm necessarily picking the Gators to beat the Georgia Bulldogs. I would still, right now, pick Georgia to win that game. But I think that game's a whole heck of a lot closer right now than people might have expected coming into the season, given all the departures and all the new faces that Florida was filling into the lineup. Don't get me wrong now, Georgia's an awesome team with a defense that everybody 
would love to have. Joe Milton the third. He is in the game because Hendon Hooker was knocked out of the game earlier here in this quarter. And Milton himself is back from a leg injury that he suffered a couple weeks ago on a sack in that pit game. Didn't return there. Didn't play last week. Guy played through a lot of playing at Michigan last year. Didn't talk about it much as he zips it in, shows you that arm, and Bayless Jones shows you that speed on a good play for the Vols. But last year, you know, he's the starter at Michigan, and then he has surgery on his thumb on his throwing hand last December. And he played through pain that whole season up there in Michigan. And he's got a ridiculous amount of talent. I mean, ridiculous amount of talent. Now, can you harness that talent? So I think the task is ahead for both him and Josh Heifel. And there is the inaccuracy. He's 6'5, 244. He's got an absolute cannon for an arm. But can it be refined? I mean, it's right now, early in his career, he's like Happy Gilmore. Mm -hmm. He can hit it out there with anybody. But when you get around the greens, can he close? That's where he's got to fix part of his game. Final half minute here in the swamp. Remember, we got Oregon and Arizona coming up. Oregon the highest ranked Pac-12 team since 2015 when Stanford was number three. I like that Oregon team now. Oh yeah. I really like that. Boy Oregon things are team. setting up well for them aren't they Greg? They are and of course you got to avoid the pothole that the Pac-12 seems to always find but. That team if they play the way they did against Ohio State. They ain't losing. Evans shaking his way down to the 10 yard line. Things are going to be heading in the right direction for Tennessee. Just probably a little too much too soon to step into the swamp against this Gators group. And they gave a good fight and they had some opportunities. And as they bring it down to the final seconds, and Milton is going to throw it away. Now leave one second and second and goal. Florida at Kentucky next week. That's a tough Kentucky team. Will Levis at quarterback. Sound on the line. And then end of the month, Halloween weekend, it'll be Georgia, the dogs. As we put it out there, everything will be defined in the course of the next four weeks for these Gators. That'll finish things here at the Swamp. 38 to 14. Emory Jones. 209 yards passing, two passing touchdowns, 144 rushing yards. Unbelievable performance and one that he needs to build on. Next week, by the way, this is not your dad's Kentucky team. They're going to have to play well on the road next week. Big week coming up for the Gators. Man, it's always fun under the lights down here at the Swamp. Glad you're with us. Next up, we got Arizona taking on number three, Oregon. For Katie, Greg, and the entire crew, I'm Joe Tessitore saying thanks for being with us. Enjoy the rest of the night. That's it from Gainesville.